with Jamie Leastman. Good morning. Good morning. It, uh, I wish it was beautiful sunny Minneapolis in spring, but it's rainy Minneapolis in spring. April showers. That's, that's all it is. We're just getting a nice bath for the city. The city that's needs right. a shower. I needed a car wash anyway. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we're here in the Fluvog store, John Fluvog shoes as always. And just excited to be here and say thank you for supporting the Kelly Nicole Foundation for now a few years in a row. We've had some listening sessions where I come in with the headphones and a few CDs and they actually have moved. We've sold a few CDs to people and um, I wanted to come in and not just say thanks but also ask you as the store manager here in uptown Minneapolis kind of why you guys have chosen to do so much community impact work and what community impact means to you as a, as a business person and as a citizen here in the Twin Cities. Well, John Fluvog is a a community company. They're a family-owned company, and uh, we we do not do a lot of big advertising. We don't have a PR firm. We don't um, rely on that sort of thing to bring customers into our door. So, luckily, we are giving a fair amount of autonomy and license to partner with local charities, local nonprofits, and um, bringing those people together in our store and we have these wonderful charity event programs that we can do when partnering with community groups and it, it brings people in, it gives back to the community and it is, I find it quite rewarding. You like doing it? Yeah, I really do. It's I, gotta be a little extra work for you, right? It is, it is. Um, but part of, you know, part of the deal is that you know, we provide staff and um, people to sell the shoes and the Charity, therefore, is motivated to get new people into the store. Yeah, Which so we, are, we always tell everyone every year that we come in and have uh, what do you guys call it? Charity Day or something? You have a name for it, right? Um, well, we used to have June was our Give Back Month, okay. our Love Month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we used to have a, a charity event company-wide every June, but for different markets in different cities, it's not always as easy. And Minneapolis, I have found it to be very friendly to um, you know different organizations wanting to partner with us and mm -hmm. big, um, raise money for their yeah. for their profits and it, it's great we've been building on events and will it be our third third year yeah. this April our event coming up this April, April will be twenty seventh here in the Twin Cities that's right it will flew by mm -hmm. uh, where are we Lagoon and Hennepin. Hennepin right across from Williams if you're low on peanuts you grab some peanuts you come back that's over right. here you buy some shoes and is it fifty percent. 50% of all purchases, regular price items, mm -hmm. are donated directly to the Kelly Nicole Foundation. It's amazing because it's not 50% of the profits. Like we get some check for 80 bucks after, even though 80 bucks would be great. It's 50 literally, if you buy a $500 pair of shoes, you know you just gave 250 bucks to the Kelly Nicole Foundation. That's right, Foundation. which is wonderful. It's, it's uh, I like to say it's guilt-free shopping. Yeah. But it, wearable it's Wearable philanthropy. Wearable philanthropy, Boom. I love that. Yes. Boom. Yes. <laughs> so it is, um, it's really great. And then, you know, we have the Kelly Nicole Foundation representatives here during the event to answer questions for people about where the money's going to, what sort of things are supported yeah. by their donations. And it's a win-win. Yeah, it so really been, is. Well, so when people ask you, what is, okay, Kelly Nicole Foundation, trauma survivors, and eating disorders, but what do they actually do? You've been to a bunch of our events. That's right. What's been your impression so far? You, you, were, were you, at the, you were at the launch, I remember. You were at the launch right. at Hell's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bolero one as well. And you swung by our last summer event on 721, yeah. Ignite This World 18, which was, you know, full on food, full on entertainment. There was, yeah. comedy, there was music, there was the documentary, and a. Uh, a discussion panel which we also recorded which was the inspiration to start a podcast. I was like, ooh, that one's really great. Well. You know, my husband loves comedy. So oh, if there's really? comedy involved, <laughs> we're showing up. So that that was always that's really fun to awesome. do. So So you've seen firsthand where the money goes. What's been your impression of kind of what we're doing and what we're trying to do over the last few years, seeing it evolve? I see that um, the Kelly Nicole Foundation through Kelly's own story that she had her life had been you know, fraught with trauma, and um, that was communicated through that wonderful video that you guys produced, and as well as through her music. So I, you know, there's my staff here at, in Fluvog, Minneapolis, um, they've had friends or they themselves have, you know, um, struggled with, you know, eating disorders. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that has been um, a, a thing that has been close to the heart of my staff. 
And I think that's very meaningful, and I think that's um, it's helpful. And then there's, you know, there's. We've done events here with the Emily Foundation. Emily, Pro yeah. Emily exactly. Program, sorry. Emily Program Foundation. Right, okay. So Mel went to EP for many years. Right. And that was the clinic she was going to when I met her. And so that's kind of how the philanthropy started. Before there was a Kelly Nicole Foundation, just after, after she passed, um, one of your employees who you know, knew her very, very well as part of her family um, was like, can we do some giving in honor of Kel? So even mm -hmm. before there was a foundation, you guys were supporting us by supporting uh, the clinic here in town. So, yeah, it's been very, um, you know, it's meant a lot to me to see people really care about mental health. And I'm curious, like, as a boss, since you do have direct reports in your role as a manager, do you feel that, like, your employees can come to you and say, listen, I'm just having one of those mental days where, you know, my leg's not broken, but I feel broken, and how am I going to get through this? Like, how can people approach you and talk about that? And can you be, like, a model for other bosses who maybe don't know how to deal with mental health in the business world? Well, yes, absolutely. I mean, if, if a, someone, I've received text messages or something, it's just like, I can't do it today. Yeah. I need to go home, I need to take a mental health day. Yeah. And, you know, there's absolutely no value in me refusing that and then having a, you know, a sad and hurting staff member here with me yeah. working, it's just, it, you know, I'd, I'd rather be supportive of my staff taking care of themselves, taking the time it needs to recover or do that self-care as unglamorous as it actually is. Yeah, it's, <laughs> and, exactly. And um, I, you know, I, I want a healthy, happy team. I think everyone, you know, we are close-knit here. There's only five people on my staff, including myself, and there's no way to disappear. Yeah. Here, you can't, I can't just like, oh no, you must come in, you must work your hours, get back into yeah. your cubicle and... You know, we hide in the stock room for so long. Right, so um, it's, it's important. It, we are a team here and we, I really, you know, I want people to be happy when they come to work or feel that if they need, if they feel that they can't come to work, they can come to me and they will um, receive understanding and empathy for mm -hmm. what they're going through. Do you feel like, I think you got, you and I are roughly around the same age. I think I'm 38. I'm, I'm 38 as well. Okay, that's close enough. And uh, <laughs> I feel like since we were kids, it's gotten so much better. Like people just didn't talk about this when, when we were kids. Like, do you remember ever telling your parents, I can't go into school today, I need a mental health day? Like, no, <laughs> no those, that term didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that exists. Like, um, you know, like you could go to the uh, to the school counselor and say I don't feel very good, and you can feign you have yeah. the flu. How do you put and it then in words? Maybe you could you could go home and cry in your pillow. Yeah. And that's pretty much you had to you know feign a, a stomach problem in order to get relief yeah. from you know the pressures of social interaction. And yeah. Things. It's weird because you had to. We all innately knew if I pretend this is physical they'll give me a break. If I tell the nurse I have a stomach ache, I can go lay down and get out of this class that I'm dreading because my bully is there and I don't want, I can't face him today. But if I say I have a bully who's always at this next classroom and I can't face him today, they'd be like, that's part of life, go deal with it. Or he'd right. just lie and say, no, I've, yeah. whatever bullshit, and he'd get away with it. And girls too, you know, girls torment the hell out of each other. That's right. <laughs> Not always physically, but we find ways. And so like, you had to pretend you had a physical problem to get it um, li to feel legitimate. Right. Right? Right. It's so weird. It's almost like setting ourselves, uh, ourselves up for psychosemantic yeah. um, you know, beha behaviors mm -hmm. just out of self defense. And almost people who cut, you know, and there can be a lot of different reasons for self destructive behavior, but they want, they're trying to show, hey, maybe it's just in my head, but even that phrase, it's just in your head, there's nothing just about that, you know, because right. one day you. you you hear, oh, so-and-so's not around anymore. Oh, really? I thought he was, thought he was doing, I didn't know he had any problems. Well, there's no one they could talk to about it. Right. You know? So, anyway, that's a little bit of the serious side, but mostly I just wanted to say thanks and give you a chance to share what's new with John Fluvog Shoes, what's going on with this spring, this summer, what are you looking forward to with the collections? Oh, boy. Well, today, in fact, we're releasing a limited edition shoe that only our store and one Canadian store has. So we're looking forward to that launch today. That's very exciting. And I plan on doing a charity event here at John Fluvog every other month. So awesome. we have... Um, 
built up relationships with various um, nonprofits around the Twin Cities, and it seems that every year everyone looks more and more forward to the Fluvog event. We yeah. have the, we just had one for Huge Improv Theater in oh, really? February, and boy, they, you know, I think we raised about around three thousand dollars for them. That's amazing. And it was really fun because I, people look forward to the event from previous years, and then they kind of save their money, like, okay. Can you put this shoe on hold for me? I want to buy it during the huge event, so my money yeah. goes to the, to the theater. And that it's, happens. Um, yeah, that happened. It's pretty to exciting. Us last year as well, because what happened with the money was uh, like Colin. What were they called? Not Webby's. Collins from other locations. Collins phone orders. Explain yep. what I'm trying to say. Well, work here. that um, <laughs> yeah, other stores or people outside of you know the Twin Cities weren't able to show up they can still contribute. They can call our store during the event hours, which are usually 1 to 6 p.m., April 27th, yep. and they can call in if they want to support the Kelly Nicole Foundation and at the same time get an awesome pair of shoes that'll last you forever. Yeah. Then they can call their order in and their, the money goes towards Kelly Nicole Foundation. As long as the phone call happens during the event hours, yeah. it counts. And um, it, it, it's a great time, it's a great time. For Kelly Nicole fans who maybe are new to John Fluvog, who could be you know, new potential long-term clients for you, talk a little bit about what makes you guys unique. It's handmade. You've got cobblers. You can use the right. word cobbler in a sentence. We ha yes, we have <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a shoe for everyone here at John Fluvog. I mean, not every shoe is going to be for you, but there will be one that is for you. We have fancy high heel shoes, we have cartoony, bright colored shoes, we have badass stompy combat boots, we have dressy men's shoes, and quasi-athletic shoes. We've got something for everybody. Feel free to check out the website and you know, call in with questions. We know where our staff here can answer all manner of questions about how they, how they fit and how they um, that's like you brought up too. We work with the cobbler. Our Which shoes is... are made to be repairable. Okay. So we sell replacement parts for our sometimes unusual heels. Yeah. And um, so the shoes, if you take care of them and you get them resold, just like an oil change on your car, they can last you indefinitely. So it's not a consumable throwaway, oh, I'll spend right. a few hundred bucks and I won't even be wearing them anymore 10 years from now. It's not That's like right. That. You know, if you, if you take care of them, you know, almost all of our shoes are made to be resolable and repairable. We also use biodegradable materials, veggie tanned leathers instead of chrome tanned leathers. And it is, um, there's something for everyone here. And they're, they're really great. They're What's really cool great. is how you guys know like every detail of how it was constructed. That's right. Why this material, mm -hmm. why that technique. And like, it's just cool to be around people who care what they're selling because you can mm -hmm. make a buck anywhere. You know, if you're smart, you can make a living doing whatever. But to sell something that you know is quality, it's got to feel pretty good. It does. It does. It is. Um, it's exciting. You know, it's really fun to work here. I get to play with shoes all day. People you see me coming out of the stock room carrying six, seven boxes of shoes, and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't ask for that. And I'm just like, it's okay. This is what John literally pays me to do. So It's a shoe party, right? It's a shoe party. That's a real thing we do here. So um, I can do a, we, we'll do a whole montage on you, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, if there's any last... Thing that you want to say I know the big phrase is pretend they're black and wear them with everything yep just pretend they're black and wear them with everything yeah it doesn't have to match to go you just rock it, it makes you happy you're killing it